would like to have the first keynote address. I'd like to humbly invite to the podium the representative of Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, which is a special advisor on strategy, to please come to this podium to give the keynote address to be delivered by the executive governor. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Not to waste much of your time, let me to share with you highlights of the keynote address of His Excellency, Madam Abrahman Abrazak. It is my honor and pleasure to stand before you today to keynote the Treff's Convocation Lecture of this great university, which is in its own right a peace-setting institution, especially in the Nigerian Muslim community. I am particularly delighted that this convocation offers me a unique opportunity to interface with our next generation of leaders on the above topic. For record purpose, it is important to stay from the onset that I'm not an academician. I am an entrepreneur who, by the grace of Allah, built a pioneering, substantial, reputable presence in the oil industry in Nigeria and Africa. Lately, I am a politician with an ambition to bring the greatest good to the greatest number of our people, particularly in my state, as mandated by the people of Kwara State. I believe that there is a need to define who a role model is. In other words, who is a role model? Defined by a famous sociologist, Robert K. Melton, a role model is a person whose behavior example or success is or can be emulated by others, especially by younger people. Role model can be parents, older siblings, neighbors, friends, teachers, counselors, community leaders, career professional and politicians who are admired and look up to by youth for their career and life engagement and accomplishments. I want to congratulate the graduating student and aid you to emulate the like of your Vice Chancellor, the Chairman of the Governing Council, and other exemplary patriots whose thoughts led to the establishment of the Fountain University. Once again, congratulations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, join me as I invite Professor Abdullah Kim Olani Wajua de Gunfagoum as he delivers the 12th Convocation Lecture of Fountain University entitled The Nigerian University System Between Public Hopes and Individual Expectation of the 21st Century. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me start by first saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To this great audience, thank you so much for the warm welcome and the, round, the rousing applause. I thank you so much. The Vice Chancellor, I will say again, outgoing and incoming. Why will Fountain University not make progress? Why will it not make progress? You can see the seamless transition that is happening here today. That is a feature of stability. Thank you, all of those who are behind it. In most institutions, in most institutions, when the outgoing is about to leave, is an acting that will be there because of politics and insincerity of purpose. What you have done today, Vice Chancellor Man, incoming, I do not envy you. Why? The whole world is focused on you because they are showing you the achievement of an institution that you are going to be nurturing for the next five years. Almighty Allah will make it easy for you. My presentation is in six segments. My introduction is an overview of the progress of this great institution. Then my charge to the graduates. Next, I look at the context of public hopes and individual expectations. Then I identified the, crit the critical stakeholders when you talk about public hopes and expectations. 
who are those critical stakeholders that we should be looking at? In the fourth segment, I look at how Nigerian universities are striving and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we talk about the university of the future. The university of the future is already here with us. I will examine the related sore points of incessant crises in public universities. And then I will close with my conclusion. My starting point is to thank the Board of Trustees, the Chairman and members of the Governing Council, the Vice Chancellor, the Senate Management Staff and Students of Fountain University for the great honor you have done to me to invite me to occupy this platform today. There are 1,001 people that you could have invited, but you counted me worthy. So when the Vice Chancellor called me, even though I knew that I'll be having back-to-back -back engagements in Abuja, I said, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I will be there. And then my chairman said, I will go with you. The vision of this great institution, which began academic activities on January 14, 2008, is to be a pace setting institution in terms of learning, character building, and service to humanity, while the mission is to produce competent and resourceful graduates with high moral standards, irrespective of race, tribe, religion, or political inclination. Permit me to note that when the current Vice Chancellor assumed duties, the university had two colleges, College of Management Science and College of Natural Sciences, and the postgraduate school. It is gratifying to know that the university has since added two more colleges, the College of Law and the College of Basic Medical and Health Sciences. While a fifth college, the College of Arts, is expected to take off next session, September 2023. The Vice Chancellor conducted us round yesterday. The Vice Chancellor Professor Kunduri and I, we fell in love with the atmosphere of this university. We fell in love with the serenity of this university. We recognized this immediately as a hub of intellectual activity. <laughs> to our graduates, we are proud of you. We are honored to celebrate this great day with you and your families, and also our dear country. The tassel is worth the hassle. You must recognize that you have become a critical part of the group that will address the nation's developmental challenges. You are coming out at a time when we have so many predatory leaders who profess egalitarian values that they do not hold themselves, families and cohorts too. They have mastered the art of legitimizing illegality in addition to reproducing and sustaining the subordination of the majority. It's a system where justice for the rich is different from that for the poor. Anyone in your shoes will feel dampened. And I will not play this down, but I tell you, it is in climes like this that those who are honest, those who are astute, and those with open minds thrive because they see challenges as opportunities. Our young graduates, you must see challenges that will confront you as opportunities. One of the things that I will do this afternoon briefly, two stories I will tell you because stories resonate. And one of them, I can say it now. When it first happened, I could not say it. But today, I can say it. When Professor Olaleko uh, Sonny was going to be appointed, I got a call from a man that I so much respect, who was a member of the selection committee then. He called me and said, VC, good morning. Even though he was somewhere I didn't know, I was in my office. Because of it, I jumped up. I said, good morning. Then he said, I want to leverage on my trust in you. We are about concluding the appointment of the next vice chancellor of Fountain University. We will not want to go wrong. There is so much expectation on me, and I will be relying on your opinion. What can you say about Professor Amidu Alale Konsoni? He's a professor of African and Middle Eastern Studies with you there at the Lagos State University. The first part of his statement relating to his trust in me was quite weighty and it impressed on me the burden of responsibility. Three things I told him, sir, I can vouch for his scholarship. I can vouch for his integrity and strong moral fiber. 
and I can vouch for his administrative powers. I did not have to lie to package my statement. So I come to, which is the final point I'm making, the sore point of incessant crisis in our universities. And for me, I think it's unfortunate. Government has not been fair in not honoring agreement. Unfortunately also, ASU has not been sufficiently strategic in pushing the frontiers of their argument. And today, our students in public universities, they are the victims. The Nigerian society is the victim of all that has happened. When two elephants fight, it is the grass. But when we just look at it as the grass, we will not understand the implications. That eight months, a number of lives have been destroyed that we don't have records of. A number of girls were impregnated because they were not engaged. A number of boys and girls became drug addicts because they were not engaged. So, a lot went into the strike at that time. Good leadership, credible policy decisions, and appropriate funding strategy are the pathways to making Nigerian universities globally competitive. Already, a number of bold initiatives have been implemented, while others are coming to the fore to revolutionize the system. For these initiatives to thrive as an indivisible whole, the system, particularly as it relates to public institutions, must be stable. In closing, I wish to reiterate the fact that to achieve the much needed stability necessary for nurturing sustainable development and that, and that not only keeps the hopes of the public alive, but also guarantees the fulfillment of individual expectations. None of the role actors can afford to remain insular in their standpoint. Assalamu alaikum. We thank you most sincerely. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite the Vice Chancellor of Fountain University to give his remark. One thing I want us to take away from the presentation, the worst thing you can do to a good presentation is to give a summary. You would end up destroying it. So please take away all our lecturers. But again, I've always wondered, why must it always be that the elephants must fight? When to elephant fight? The grass suffers. What are one elephants make love? What happens? Who suffers? Nobody. So now, though this award of honor present, presented to His Excellency Abdurrahman Abdurrazak as chairman and keynote speaker at the 12th convention ceremony uh, lecture of Fountain University. Then again, our lecturer, you see today you are having uh, two for the price of one. The management decided to do something which we have never done for any convocation lecturer. And that is, uh, the university has decided to appoint him as the ambassador of Fountain University. 
Yes. Yeah. The pro chancellor will come forward to decorate our new ambassador with the garland, and he and the chairman of BOT will come, and of course the governor. And I also want Alaja Abdurazak to also join us because we need some feminine touch here. Aware of nobody. Mutawalin there. She. Of course, yes. So, this is a. I was never okay to. So this is the uh, letter of credence appointing him as the ambassador of Fountain University and his first part of call will be the United States to represent us. Free ticket. I'm presenting this to uh, our convention lecturer on behalf of the university. And of course, the chairman, BOT, and the PC can also join us, please. Please join us, sir. Yeah. 